Kibidua Maria, Maria Motze, uh, Genaritu Mohadele 39. My name is Edwin Motze. My native name is Rapula. Rapula means one who comes with rain or Mr. Rain. I got married to Maria in 2001 and uh, since that time we are great friends, soulmates. Yeah. Na Kibidua Stanley. Si Pimolo Monache. Ke Dimwaha Dile Masome Asupa Le Bongwe, seventeen seventy one years old. Me Ketela was Hero Yoga in Kemonana. My name is Masedi Tata Kewamudim and I'm twenty three years old. My favorite thing to do for fun is actually not fun for, for most people. My favorite thing to do is to go on radio and talk to various people. That's what I do. That's what gives me more joy. I am Bonso Sekisang and I'm 20 years old. What I like to do most is, I'm going to be honest, I, I, I go climbing with my friends. We just go climbing, enjoy ourselves. I get to meet different people and the music, I dance, I dance. I wouldn't say I'm a good dancer, but yes, I dance, I try. And one of the things that concerns me is the issue of AIDS fatigue, message fatigue. People are tired of hearing about uh, HIV AIDS. It, that was, um, that's an issue that, that we've addressed. We now have medication, we can, we can move on. It's still a very serious issue in this country. There are almost 14,000 new infections every year. That's 37 new infections every day. One in five people in the adult population in this country here has HIV. That is an alarming statistic. It means for every five people that I meet in Botswana, one of them is HIV positive. That's a huge number, and it should make us all be concerned. We haven't won the war as yet. If we look at uh, the cohort of our adolescent uh, girls and uh, young women, 40 new infections per week to us are far too high. And this is a reproductive age group. This is the future for this country. HIV AIDS is still a real big issue. As long as a lot of people are getting it, um, we are not yet there. I remember uh, everyone seemed to be going to a funeral on Saturday uh, to bury a loved one or knew someone who, who, was, who was in mourning uh, because the, uh, the epidemic was um, absolutely devastating this country. It was so bad, in fact, that in 2000, former President Festus Mohai at the UN General Assembly said this country faced extinction unless something was done, was done to address it. People were getting sick and uh, we are at the loss of what is supposed to be done. HIV AIDS was killing not only policemen and soldiers and teachers, it was also health workers themselves and our health workers who were not sick were overwhelmed. They were working 18 hours, and therefore assistance was really badly needed. It started with Condi Rice, who was my national security counselor, and she came in early in the presidency and said, are you aware there's a pandemic destroying an entire generation of people on the continent of Africa? I believe that to whom much is given, much is required, and we're a blessed nation. And so when you think about the implications of a pandemic, not only from an economic security perspective on this continent, but from a national security perspective. I decided to do something about it. My administration came up with a clear strategy and sprung it on the Congress with no notice. And thankfully, both Republicans and Democrats supported the effort. It got a momentum going and 
it worked. And so I went back to Congress and asked for an additional funding. And because of the success of PEPFAR, the initial round, Congress was more than willing to continue on with the success. When we started, this was an emergency, and the country on its own did not have capacity, technical capacity, financial capacity to deal with the disease on its own. And through the U.S. government, the country was able to receive, first of all, financial assistance that helped in building the infrastructure, that helped in training the healthcare workers on managing HIV. And they also provided drugs, they provided some of the equipment that are used for diagnosing people with HIV. The U.S. government has budgeted $900 million through the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief to combat HIV AIDS since the program started in 2004 here at Botswana, and $20 million for the Treat All program, which I think is going to be the policy that will boost us through the finish line where we can finally achieve epidemic control in Botswana. So Treat All strategy is a strategy that was launched by His Excellency Ian Kama and this strategy is uh, basically initiating all those that are positive on treatment without uh, waiting for CD4 count. We are saying the moment you get tested and we find out that you have got the virus, we put you immediately on the treatment. That is Treat All. When people do test, they actually are enrolled in the ARV program. They don't have to wait. <laughs> uh, this is how it started. You know, everybody wants to get into a, a relationship. So, it was at a time when I had newly gone tested for HIV. So, I was able to get to the Virginia on Pimetsi Mutivi. This lady, we were kind of like, she was like, more like my sister. You know, Virginia, I, I want to have a partner whom I can settle with. And um, I've tried to search myself, I can't find one. Please help me find somebody whom I can settle with. After six, seven months or so, she called me, she said, I need you to come and meet somebody. So I went there and I found her with, with Maria. I was staying in Habroni, Habroni West, and uh, he was working at um, TCM. And uh, that time I wanted to take a taxi going home, but I decided to just walk with him from the main mall to Habroni West, from Habroni West to where he's working. So it was, a journey that was very short, but it's a long journey. <laughs> Our relationship began from there, and then since that time, I think it's like 16 years ago, we've been together. One of the biggest things that we fight about is, <laughs> I like taking risk. risk. Too quickly. And just like promptly. <laughs> That's what and we always fight we about. We fight, because I'm yeah. somebody who just She's like... She's so calm. Let me just find out first. Mm. Sometimes, yes, he will be risking and it will come up good. Sometimes he will be risking and it will be so bad. So, so bad. <laughs> so bad. That I even regret why I did that. <laughs> and I'll be the one who will be comforting him. No, you are not supposed to blame yourself. I got diagnosed with HIV, I think 18 years ago. That is diagnosis. I don't know when I got the virus. I'm so comfortable with the treatment. I'm okay with it. I don't experience any problems. The drugs that we use um, have less side effects. They are very effective in reducing the viral load. Viral load is the level of the virus in your body. So there's no reason to be afraid uh, to start treatment. Before treat all, people were getting sick and uh, people never wanted to know their status. But since this treat all, people are starting to know their status. They're going for an HIV test, and they know nowadays that if they test positive, they know that they start the treatment there and there. I'm so good and I'm feeling good. I only see the doctor twice in a year. No side effects at all. 
when you are taking medication today, you are building up uh, on your health for tomorrow. We don't want you to get sick. Uh, studies have shown that there's more benefit to you getting started on treatment uh, without the delays because we are avoiding getting opportunistic infections, infections like TB, meningitis, infections of the brain. The benefit of starting treatment early is that you are preserving your immunity. You don't have to wait until your immune system is really down to be initiated on treatment. We say to ourselves, we need to have a family. We want to have our own children. Now the question is, we are HIV positive. How are we going to do that? The government introduced a program many years ago uh, for prevention of mother-to-child transmission, which has really done a good job in reducing the number of orphaned children because mothers were able to go on treatment and therefore live long and also have children who are HIV negative. If you really think about how tragic it is for a young child, the ultimate innocent, to have an AIDS virus, it breaks your heart. And so part of PEPFAR, and a very successful part of PEPFAR, was dealing with the mother-to-child transmission issue. At that time, I think the PMTCT uh, program was pretty new. And in fact, we were some of the people who advocated for its rollout. And so it was a good platform for us to allow ourselves to be used as a model to make sure that it works well. All our three children are, are HIV negative. You have to take responsibility of your health. Having children, you have to plan. You should know that you are HIV positive. You are having the virus inside your body. The virus keeps on multiplying, replicating, doing all those sorts of things in your body if you are not responsible. So both of you, you should be um, generally well. My advice is that if you happen to discover that you are pregnant, whether you know your status or you don't know your status, make sure that at the earliest time of your pregnancy, you go and do an HIV test so that you save the next generation. The first born, we planned for that baby. And indeed, we've got an HIV free child. Right now, she is 14 years. She has completed her form three. She has arrived at the finals uh, last week, Friday. She's waiting for the results to come and we are proud that she's doing Form 3 and we want to see her going to do Form 4, Form 5 and to the university. We want to see her and we believe we will. If you are a mother with HIV, enrolling on treatment can also increase your chances of having an HIV negative baby because you are suppressing the viral load. Therefore, chances of you transmitting that virus to the child are also very minimized. If you look at the effect now of PMTCT, mother-to-child transmission, we are near elimination. HIV is here with us. Let's not get tired to talk about HIV. Every day somebody is getting infected with HIV. And as a matter of fact, everybody needs to be reminded that HIV and AIDS exist. We still have people who are being critically sick because uh, they just discovered their HIV positive when it's late. You know, I advise people to know their status when they're in their prime time life or when they're in their prime health condition. We still have a long way. We want to see our children grown up, going to the university, graduating. We want to see them. That's why we, we are really taking care of ourselves. It's important for us to consistently take the medication because they give us hope, hope to raise our children. They give us hope, you know, to live like everybody else is, is living. We have visions, we have dreams yeah. that we want to achieve in this life. So by taking medication, we are saying we want to live to see those dreams getting accomplished in our life. I've been living with HIV since birth, so for the past 23 years and I've been on treatment for the past 13 years. To this day, I've lost four family members to AIDS and two close friends to AIDS. The biggest challenge for me about living with HIV is that I have to do it all on my own. I grew up in various places. Sometimes I had to move because either I had so many issues that the person who I was living with could not deal with those issues or the person that I was living with had passed away. So it has been more like me against the world. 
Unfortunately for me, going public with my status has, I would say, I would say it somehow put my dating, my dating life on pause because most of the time if I say I'm HIV positive or if, if, or if somebody actually knows that I'm living with HIV, they will tell me outright that I would date you just that you're living with HIV. I have faced quite a bit of stigma myself. Most of the time, it not been direct stigma. I remember when I went public with my status, most people just stopped talking to me, stopped hanging out with me because they knew that I went public and they knew that I'm living with HIV. And to me, that pushed me even harder to do the work that I do. I work at Sintabale. Sintabale is a Prince-founded organization that provides psychosocial support for children living with HIV. So I work there as the Advocacy and Communications Officer and what I do is I try to engage young people and the community, different stakeholders together to come and discuss various HIV issues. Sometimes I find myself speaking on behalf of Sintabale at different platforms all across Botswana. When you are speaking on radio, you actually get to impact on other people. You get to impact people that you don't get to see on everyday life. You get to be yourself and actually connect emotionally with somebody else. That's what I love most about radio. The reason why I talk about HIV issues, yes, it's partly because of the people that I've lost and I'm trying to help other people not to go through what I went through. The other reason why I do it is because it's painful to know that I'm living with HIV and I'm able to survive and yet people around me are dying. It's, it's, a, it's really a painful thing to see yourself going on another day, an extra day and somebody else is there and is dying because they don't know how to get help, they don't know how to accept themselves. The government of Botswana has been doing so much with the treatment being available to every Muzwana at no cost to them and now also with treat all being available to say when you test positive today get on treatment. The government of Botswana has played a major role in addressing this public health concern that we have. First and foremost, an enormous political commitment shown at the highest level. And they recognized that for us to get epidemic control, we needed to have some strategic investments being made. USAID is specifically supporting uh, government of Botswana on orphans and vulnerable children, working with uh, local NGO partners and international NGOs, as well as working with the Department of Social and Community Development and Social Protection. And it's through this support that children are identified and re-enrolled in treatment if they have defaulted on HIV treatment. Um, they are provided with life skills programs. They are also provided with early childhood, particularly for children with caregivers who are in the remote areas and have no access to education. The Centre for Disease Control and Prevention is working with Minister of Health to strengthen and to build capacity to be able to diagnose people that have HIV. They also work with the Minister of Health in getting people on treatment. Sometimes you feel like you are alone. You feel like it's only you and you from that small country and there's nobody else who is facing whatever you're facing. Or sometimes you feel like you have the worst situation ever. But actually when you begin to listen to other people, you realize that your situation is not as big as it seems to be. Even though we say that people should go and get tested, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to test today and be told you're HIV positive when you don't have a support structure around you that is going to help you to cope or to be able to adhere to your treatment. I think the reason why people are not getting help is there's so many variables but the main thing is that people don't have support or rather people don't know how to ask for support. Some people they are afraid, some people they don't know where to get the proper help they need and some people don't really know what ARVs do or how important they are. If somebody was to first test positively today, I would first ask them to take some time to sit down and soak it in. It's going to be a blow, it's going to be a shock to you. And then you need to realize that at the end of the day is your life and you're in charge of it. And the first thing that you need to do is actually go seek further counseling to understand what it means to be HIV positive and to know the treatment that you can take and to do it immediately. It means we are no longer going to get worried about I'm HIV positive, will I work? Will I school? Will I be able to see the next 30 years and take care of my kids? It means you can have it all. 
you can live as normal life as you would even if you didn't have HIV. What I would say to encourage somebody to test is that they first need to realize that they are not alone. All across the world there are 37 million other people who are living with HIV. That is across the world. So when you realize that you are not alone, you realize that other people have been able to live well with HIV. Therefore, you can also be able to live well with HIV. It's going to be challenging. I'm not going to say it's going to be a smooth ride. It's going to be very, very challenging. But if you know that you are not alone, you're not the first person to face this thing, and you know that I can get help, and you voice out to say, I need help. Even if your family is not there for you, there are different other people who are there, there are different organizations which are there to try and help you to be able to accept and to be able to get the treatment that you need. The real strong message is get tested. If you're positive, go on, go on treatment uh, right away. And this image flashed in my mind, I don't know if you're a Star Trek fan, right? The, uh, the live long and prosper. <laughs> so treat all, live long and, live long and prosper, uh, which you can certainly do. So to me it means I have no limitations on earth because I'm living with HIV. Now I know that I can achieve anything in my life as long as I adhere to my treatment. What I've learned about myself is that I'm stronger than I ever thought I am. Kwele <laughs> HIV. Ke ne ke setse ke ikhansetse ke amogetse seemo sami ga go a ntshosa ga go a re ke ne ka amogela seemo me ke ne ke tshogetse balelwa palame mosadi wa mele bana gore bone ba go tsaya ya nkhanya me ha ba utwa gore ke positive. So se se neng se le bo thoko go di heta tsothe ha ke sena go nne ke le moga go re HIV positive ke kgethololo le go khokhontswa ke batho ngwana ke o na tsena le go primary wa bofelo go go santse go nkutusa botoko o na bo wa go skoleng tsatsi le le tsatsi a taalela are di pies ba nkana ba gagwe ba ne ba mara Raho o bola wa ke 80 ga re bate go tshameka le wena ga re bate go ja le wena go ne go nkutusa botoko me ke ne ka tsaya ka akanya ka tsaya tshetso ya gore ke tshwanetse ke emise so so se ka be ke a gore ka t-shirt ke a go iprinta ke kwala gore ka ha mara go ga gagwe ke na ke botoka ka gore nta te witse semo sa gago wena ra go ga itse semo sa gago o ka go o ka nna swana go nngwe le nngwe me gone go ga itse kwa thole ba motshwenya ga be go hela early days of the epidemic we had that slogan that testing and knowing your status was the gateway to accessing our services. So our message is very, very simple. Go test so that you know your status. If you are negative, essentially we want you to maintain that negativity. If you are positive, we are saying that helps you now to choose from this array of programs and to be assisted into the relevant programs, whether it's treat all, which is now the flagship. go itse semo sa gago ke tsela e e bulegetseng botsogo ja gago le botshelo ja gago jo thehela we continue in different clinics and in different you know gatherings to encourage people to go out and test 
My message to the Botswana citizen is get screened uh, to determine whether or not you have the, uh, the HIV virus. Go and get tested and know your status because you don't have to be afraid of HIV anymore. Um, it's just like having high blood pressure or you know any other condition out there that you have to take medication for the rest of your life, but it's better to know than uh, to be in the dark. Going into treatment is just like drinking tea every morning. It's just like eating bread or porridge every morning. Even if I'm in the bus or anywhere where I'm going, I'm going with, the, with my medication, taking it, I'm not embarrassed. It's just like uh, when you got a headache, then you have to take your, your grandpa or whatever painkiller you have. Remember the early days, it was a cocktail of uh, all these sorts of drugs. There were lots and lots of uh, um, um, side effects, but science is evolving with research and evolution on this treatment we now are seeing lesser and lesser and lesser side effects. And we are seeing people living more longer and longer on treatment. I have never been in hospital. People are going into hospital with ailments and all that, but not myself. No side effects, nothing at all. That's why I say it's just like drinking tea or eating your own porridge. Yeah. You see, just as easy as ABC. I take my tablets, my, my daily is 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the evening. But I never fail. For 17 years, I have never defaulted. Not even a single day. That's why I'm so fit. How treatment? Oai, ke a go tshela dingwaga gongwe di ka nna tharo kana faefe hela e ke thoka hetse. Ke ne ke itsholo hetse hela ya lo go re nya wa ke a go swa wi fin 5 years ke tabe ke se o mo le hatsi. Me ka treatment a now, I'm going to live and I hotel like 100 years. People don't know that I'm shy. They don't know that I am shy. Yes, I'm shy. I can get... When I get into like a bunch of people, a group of people, a lot of people, I just, I always feel like running away or something. But when I, I get my confidence, I, I, I grab it and I, I utilize it. Oh my word, I love a lot of things. I love modeling, I love singing, I love dancing. But mostly I love, I enjoy organizing events like event management, parties, weddings, and, and going to the malls. Window shopping, if you have money, we just go shopping. And, buying a few things. Last year, May 2016, I just went for my general checkup. The results came out, came out positive. What am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my boyfriend? What am I going to tell my friends, my family and other people? It's difficult for people to come out of the closet and let everybody that they are HIV positive because of the stigma. The stigma itself, hella hella, it's, it's, it, it's what stops people from letting other people that they are, letting other people know that they are HIV positive. The population that has got the highest number of new infections in Botswana are the young people. Starting my treatment, I always said, I'm going to take my treatment regularly with, with no distraction, with, with nothing. I'm going to take my treatment until I die. So my first pill, taking it, I felt something in my life has changed for the better. Okay, this is the part that I like most. Treat All is it's a, it's a really good initiative. Before we had Treat All, someone would go and test and then they would test positive. Then they would go home. They were supposed to wait for, for their CD4 to drop. But from there, they would just ignore and never go back to the hospital. But with Treat All, you don't have to wait for, for a certain period. Who could have known that me and you would finally... Actually, it's either you are infected or affected. It affects 
everyone. He doesn't choose it. Whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, HIV is a prevailing issue, yes, of course, but that doesn't mean HIV puts an end to everything in your life. Like myself, I'm HIV, but I don't look HIV positive. Yes, I look strong and fit and handsome and glowing as ever. So, to the, to the young community, if you get HIV, you shouldn't, you shouldn't draw for your treatment. Start your treatment on time and take your medication regularly. Finding somebody who is the same status or finding somebody who would accept you as you are is not an easy thing. Most people, after finding out that I'm HIV positive, they just tend to run away. Yeah. But I'm hoping to find somebody who understands me and who, who knows me, who listens to my opinions and knows that I'm HIV positive. The U.S. government through USAID is currently supporting a project called Linkages Project and this project is aimed at increasing access of HIV services for key populations. Men for Health is an organization that deals with MSM, men who sleep with other men, gay people. So at Men for Health, we like um, a link between the, the community and the key population. The goal of reaching zero new infections, treat all makes it possible. After helping somebody, I always feel relieved. Like I, I have taken off that load of my chest or my shoulders. There are more blessings coming into my life because I have helped somebody else. My mom is my role model. You know, she's just, she's that strong woman. When I was young, she used to tell me, this world has, has I, I'm trying to remember. This world is full of, is full of, of thorns that prick had. So you should grow up to be a strong young man. With truth all, you can have anything that you want. You can have your dream house, your dream car, your your fitness, your friends, family around you living healthy and happily. I want to live until, I don't know, until, until, and make changes, help people, change people's lives, touch their lives, and you know. So I want to live forever, if that was possible. The statistics show that the program works. If you just focus on success, you miss the point that there are still people that need help. And the government here, while it's taken a lot of responsibility, still needs help to strengthen their healthcare delivery systems to the point where they can self-fund. The success uh, of our health outcomes is very much determined by the kind of partnerships that we have. So partnerships are very critical. It's the grassroots levels where you're also trying to address those difficult cultural issues that sometimes can't just be addressed by remote. USAID is using community health workers and community organizations to reach out to the last mile of communities that will never be able to be reached with the normal streamlined system. Uh, the support we're getting from the embassy through PEPFA, various strategies were employed and there have been lots of achievements indeed. The good thing about PEPFA is there's now an infrastructure in place where if tested and if positive, you can get help. I am grateful for the uh, U.S. citizens who uh, work in this country both in the public sector and the NGOs that are really leading with their hearts. Botswana has always responded. We have been number one in terms of eliminating mother-to-child transmission, in terms of enrolling people onto ARTs. I'm really positive that with the PEFA support and the other partner support, uh, joining hands with the country of Botswana, the Ministry of Health, we gonna reach epidemic control before we know it.
The USG has been providing non-stop technical support in addressing HIV in, in this country and the USG government through PEPFAR was able to come forward and also help us. You know, I'm backing on this Nobel initiative which was one of those high impact interventions that if we got it right would be able to actually bring us towards epidemic control. PEPFA is a gift from the American government, American people, to countries that have been affected by HIV, like Botswana. And I think it, it really shows love, it shows um, compassion. I'm most proud of American generosity. Our country is generous and compassionate. And if we put our minds to something, we can't solve every problem, but we're pretty good about solve, helping solve the big ones. And there's nothing bigger than the loss of uh, millions of human lives. I would thank them for the collaborative relationship we have had. We admire each other's values, uh, and we have benefited immensely from that relationship, both aspirationally and in material terms. There's a marathon in the United States, the Boston Marathon, a 26 mile race and as you get tantalizingly close to the finish line there's something called Heartbreak Hill and a lot of people they kind of hit the wall there and they can't go can't go any further. That's where we are now in this country. Uh, we're at Heartbreak Hill. I think our hearts will not be broken. I think our hearts will be full of joy and uh, a sense of accomplishment. We push through and reach, uh, reach epidemic control. This is the time that now we can do business as usual. We need to review the strategies uh, we need to see what works and discard what doesn't work. Those that are still negative, please remain negative. And those that are positive, please take medication so that we will continue to live longer and better life. All it takes is to test early, treat early, and live long. If you are living well on treatment, you can have anything that you want to get in life. There is no limitation as long as you are adherent to your treatment, as long as you are listening to your doctors. There is nothing under the sun that you cannot achieve. To me, it means, like my vision to travel the world is possible if I'm on treatment and I adhere to my treatment. That to me, it says if I want to have kids and I want to get married one day, it's possible if I adhere to my treatment. I want everyone who is HIV positive to open their hearts to treat all, to the new treat all initiative. Your health will be fine, you'll be well, even when it comes to having children, your system, your immunity will be kept strong for as long as you are on treatment. Whether they are HIV positive or not, there's still a lot one can achieve. The earlier you get on treatment, the longer your chances of living and the stronger your body becomes. Then people won't see the difference between before you were infected and after you are infected. Bocaumohonima. Get a, a, a healthy life, just enjoy life with no hiccups, no stress, and relax. Treat all is having it all. Having your job, having your husband, having your dream child, having the future that you want, have it all. In Botswana, there is a spirit of Boto, working together, helping others, which I believe is a very important characteristic that defines us as a nation. A fabulous country. It's an honor to come and see the work that's being done and to remind people that there's more work to be done. You can have it all with Tweet All. You can have it all with Tweet All. I should have it all and I believe that I can have it all. You can have it all with Tweet All. <laughs> you can have it all with Tweet All. Good. <laughs> Good. Wish you the best of luck. Back in case of all and you can't get up. Still a booty gamble since the early one. Kids are not telling you. Friend indeed, I'll be that true friend indeed.
Set the golden goal, the extra mile, and I made some sacrifices along the road. And I take a moment, drove the message home. And I oftentimes feel I'm being denied the right to spread my wings and fly. If it's 50 miles, I keep reminding them so dehydrated, my mouth is dry. Bahorata o kasan kahoya, how is he getting shade? Le hao kata 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 sebe sabiri mona kaheli. Mad love for my mom and my dad. Every time when I'm sad, play the role of a friend. For a friend in need is a friend in need, and whatever you need, you depend on me. Zile wo beta uka, zile wo beta. Dream too big, they thought I was crazy But their mind's too small to understand Or even comprehend the motives of my plan I tried searching for love, it didn't go well Need a chain that be coming with chips Success is on the bucket list Always. Feel it, we'll be time, we'll drop Feel it, we'll be time, we'll drop 